All right, friends and family, welcome to the Lord Badu show. This is the debut. This is the first time Lord Badu is coming on live, and I have a, a, a man of God with me. Uh, uh, people call him deacon. You know, people call him minister. I call him bishop. He, he's he's my bishop. Bishop Yao Ose. Uh, uh, Yao Ose is uh, the co-founder and president of True Worshippers. Um, I believe you guys are in Canada and um, Washington D.C. Right. Yes. Yeah. So he he he's in he's in uh, I guess they have two offices, Canada and America. Um, he also runs Yaose um, Owusu Ministries, um, and you know he's he's a, he's a married man. He's a young man. When I, when I first met, honestly, let me tell you a quick story, bro. Do you remember the first time we met? <laughs> I don't know if I remember. Yeah. So the first time we met, the first yeah. time we met was in New Jersey at okay. Apostle Bidiaco's um, funeral. Oh really? I yeah, that's the f- met before that. Actually. Yeah, no, no, that was that was the first time we ever met, and okay. I was with my brother Ebenezer, and okay. yeah, Lefty, and and he's like, "Yo, bro, that's y'all say." I'm like, "For real?" And then, <laughs> but like, you know, like the way I, the way I am, I don't I don't like to you know yeah get up because I don't I don't like to I don't like to approach people too much yeah but like it's it's crazy because. You actually saw us and you came up to us. You're like, yo, bro, what's going on, bro? This is, I'm like, yo, I swear this guy's yeah. like a celebrity, bro. This guy, <laughs> this guy's coming to me and he's saying, you know, so you know, that shows your humility, bro. And I, I just, I just honor you with that, man, because not a lot of people would do that. Um, so, you know, Yao says is a super humble guy. He's a man of God. And bro, I'm, I appreciate you coming on, on the podcast with me. This is, the, you're my first guest. So this is, this is an honor That's to, to have you here. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. You, you just got married. How how how's 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 marriage treating you? Yeah, man. It's, Jeez. It's, it's cool, man. It's it's a good feeling. I, I've I've seen the blessings of it. Mm. Um, it's, it's taught me how to be sacrificial to to what I want to do sometimes. It's yeah. just taught me how to live with somebody, uh how to live in harmony, how to do a lot of things with somebody mm. else. But it's also shown me how it's made me better. Mm. So First six months has been really good, man. I really loved it. I love, awesome, I love it. Sorry, and I, I hope I enjoyed the next six months and the, till death to us part. Hundred yeah. percent. That's, yeah. that's amazing, bro. So, yeah. what, what would you tell? What would you tell these these young men going around and acting foolish? Uh, what would you tell them about marriage? And and uh, what would you tell them? You know, I mean, I'll just definitely tell somebody that like take your time and pray over it. Um, there should be a reason why you're not married, right? And that mm. reason shouldn't be because of sin or you wanting to test waters or do certain things. But um, I believe in men um, figuring themselves out. Everybody yeah. has a process. They got to figure themselves out. Mm. If they come to a place of realization, um, sometimes that's found in prayer. And um, some people also want to finish things. Some people know what they want to do, but they want to finish yeah. school. Maybe they got some debt they want to take care of mm. for different reasons. But I'll say this. What you think you can accomplish by yourself, um, if you add somebody to it, can probably give you a better strategy, a better way. So marriage does that, you know. Um, That's deep. Don't think you have to have everything in order, man. Sometimes a woman can come and help you put it in order and make yep. it. And you can actually get to the place you actually wanted to get to with somebody else. Mm. And I've seen that blessing. So I'm telling people it's a good thing. The Bible speaks about it. The man that finds a wife finds obtains favor from the Lord, and mm-hmm. God's favor can be anybody's doctorate degree any day. So obtain yeah. that favor, man. You know, go for it, but be wise. Pray about it. Make sure it's the one that the Lord wants you to be with, somebody to connect with. So if you have to take your time and do that to pray and to survey, do that as well. Mm. Don't rush, but when you get into it, you've done it the right way. You'll love it. Yeah. That's deep. God bless you, bro. Yeah, man. man, man is full of wisdom. That's 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 that's, that's powerful, bro. Yeah. So, yeah. what's what's to to all the people who don't know you, what's yeah. one interesting thing about you that nobody really that you don't really talk about that nobody really knows? What's one interesting thing? Uh, <laughs> Sorry to put you on the spot, but no, I'm probably people don't know that I'm a major hip hop fan. People don't probably know that. Really? Yeah. They probably wow. Don't know that like. You know, um, you know, as I've grown in Christ, I've 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 grown to, you know, subtract certain songs and things that I know are very contrary to the Word of God. Mm-hmm. Like the art form of what hip hop provides, like the understanding of it, and it's 
you know, in this entirety, I've kind of, I've always had that background. I loved hip hop. Wow, that's dope. I always thought I was going to be a DJ or something. You know, <laughs> I just always wanted to be like on the side. So I think people don't know that about me. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a movie fan, but yeah, I think the hip hop thing is like, yeah. No, nobody, nobody would, nobody would have ever guessed that because, like, so. you, you know, because you know, they see you, uh, they see you in videos, you know, so singing Elder Rare Crew or you know, yeah, really. <laughs> I mean, so, some of that stuff. So nobody would, yo, that's dope though. That's dope. That's why maybe yeah. that's why we connect, bro. Maybe that's why we connect because yo, that's why, yo, I know, but I think that's why I do because I can tell. Yeah, that like, you know, the Jay Dilla, like those kind of, you know, yeah, like, kind of beats, like, so I just be like, yo, this is nice, you know. Appreciate um, it, man. So that's why. It. Appreciate your style because I don't really like rap, gospel rap. Like mm. it was something that we should turn me off because I feel like people just always wanted to be OD about it. Like they wanted to be more gangster, more yeah. back clothes, sound more hard. It makes the gospel, bro. Present it, right? <laughs> be good. Yeah, and I feel like with you, you kind of have that cool, cool, cool vibe, like underground rapper vibe. Like, and I always loved when it came to hip hop. I loved it. Like the Talib Kweli is the most deaf. You know, the Those are the people I grew up on too. Yeah. You know, yeah. So it's kind of like I was always attracted to that. So yeah. Oh, that's dope. That's dope. That's dope. So yeah. like, even for me, like when I, it was hard for me to 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 actually start rapping, like mm-hmm. like becoming a Christian rapper because because of the church that we're in. You know, everything is a bit everything is a bit uh old school. Yeah. So when they. When I started rapping, I started rapping like 10 years ago. So I was in like grade, I was in the ninth grade or something like that. Mm. I started, I started rapping and like, it was hard. Like my, my, I felt like my own people didn't accept me until a specific time in my life. Like where they see now is actually a serious Christian. Then they're like, oh, okay, maybe this rap, this hip hop thing is not that bad. You know, he can, he can reach the youth. So like, I remember, I, I know this, this is, this is the statement that hurts me the most, but I remember um, an elder of my, of not my assembly, but like just in the church in general, he's like, um, this guy, cause I, I performed at Sony Badu when he came yeah. to Toronto. Yeah. So that yeah. was my, that was like my first performance with, oh, my bad. My, yeah, yeah, my bad. I performed at Sony Badu for the first time. And my, one of the elders is like, yo, this guy is a disgrace. This guy's, this guy's a disgrace to, to the church of Pentecost. Damn, bro, cause you rapped, bro. That like, yo, that cut me. That it cut me deep. I'm like, <laughs> disgrace, bro. Bro, yo, the man hey. said this guy. This guy's a disgrace That's to, the ch- to the church of Pentecost, serious, man. You know, bro. I was hurt. Have, man, the crazy thing is right now, the church of Pentecost in the UK. That pastor Richard, I don't know if you know him, Pastor Richard Kwachi. Yeah, I seen him. I seen him. Yeah, he, he was a rapper too. Like That's crazy. Rapper. And he was dope. It was called Radiant. And Jeez. they called them into ministry. So, bro, like, as long as we're presenting the gospel, man, that's what they have to look at. But yeah. now that people, again, in my book talks about that, where culture overrides Christ. So if it doesn't look like what they're used to, they mm-hmm. just shun it. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, definitely. So let, let's, 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 let's actually dive into that. Mm-hmm. Let's dive into the book, the, the, the African Elephant. So you're, you're now a published author. You're now a published author, so you know you have some credentials on you. You have some credentials yeah. on you. So yeah, you guys, yeah. you guys, you trying to book y'all? You can't just book him like that. Don't just email it. You know you have to go through that. You have to go through oh. the serious stuff. Uh, nah, it's not, really, <laughs> it's not that serious. But <laughs> just even like for instance, my situation, right? My yeah. situation where the elder um, said that this guy's a disgrace to the to the whole church, the whole. He even didn't say just Canada or just by so he said I'm a disgrace the whole to the whole church of Pentecost. Ah, the whole Ghana church. headquarters. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. like how you know, like your book is about, you know, the, the young people kind of dispersing from um these churches, right? Yeah. And in my honestly, in my situation, I felt like that was a reason for me to leave. Yeah. I like I because like yo, if if you're doing something and these older people who are supposed to be your father, your spiritual fathers, are are saying this stuff about you. Like, you you clearly don't feel like you're wanted there or needed there, right? Correct. Correct. So, from your book, like I know you kind of you kind of you kind of went deep in it, but yeah. why? Like, why do you think these things happen the way they happen? Yeah. I th- I think I think they happen because of um, 
the one lack of exposure um, mm. to um, cultural backgrounds. So for instance, right, um, what you're doing now, um, it's, 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 that culture looks down on mm. hip hop. The hip hop yeah. culture is an attacked culture, right? Mm -hmm. Because what it represents. It started not just with the Africans, it started with the whites, even in America. They saw the hip hop culture emerge. Then um, they said, look at NWA, look at Snoop Dogg, look at these people, Ice Cube, look at these guys, and look at what they portray, look at how they dress, yeah. look at the, the crimes they talk about, look how they talk about women. So, so the hip hop culture in itself has been attacked. It's been given the devil's music, the mm. heathen background. So because of that, um, people shun it away as it came directly from hell, mm. right? So that's the reason why it's it's bad. And then when you see the people associated with it, it's just that look at their lifestyles, look at yeah. how they dress. A Christian is not supposed to dress like that, nor talk like that. So anything that comes from this group of people can't can't be sacred and can't be holy, right? Mm -hmm. So for that reason, our parents, our pastors will say, you know, this person is disgrace. Why? Because he's singing the devil's music. Automatically, they see that's the devil's music. Yeah. And and because their culture also tells them that this is bad, they, they, they'll just blast you. So I think one is lack of exposure because they've only seen one thing. They've only heard one thing. So they go with that. And then also because their culture looks down, like, like uh, reggae music to them, right? Um, if you have dreads, even if you don't smoke weed, you don't do anything bad. If you have yeah. dreads, identify you being a Rastafarian. Right, right. Yeah. For that reason, it means you smoke weed. Now, smoking weed back then means that you're a bad person. You, know? mm -hmm. you don't have, you're lazy. You don't have nothing to do. And so anybody that has dreads, automatically is shunned. Like, he can't and be a leader because he has dreads. Yeah. What does dreads have to do with anything? It's not the dreads per se. It's what the dreads have, it's what the dreads signify in a majority of people that use it, right? Mm. So because of that, they just be like, nah, we're not messing with these people anymore. So that's the reason why they fight back because they, they feel like it identifies with something worldly. Yeah. And that's why they, they fight it. But they never really look at the intent of it. Like, you just look at it like hair is hair. If I decide to grow it or to cut it, it has nothing to do with my heart. Exactly. Yep. You know, and they don't they don't see it that way. They mm. see it as because we have a culture that's big on perception. Yeah. Not so much of what's inside of somebody. Exactly. My dad told me one day, he said, Look, if you look at the Church of Pentecost, right? And we both go there and we look at the people that we suspend. Have you ever seen anybody suspended that has dreads? Hmm. Have you have you seen anybody suspended that has dreads, bro? Uh, anybody in your life with any suspension that you've seen? Have you seen somebody? Nah, dreads? not in my church. Okay. Yeah. In my church, I've been in different ones. I've never seen a man with dreads mm. get suspended. The kind of people I see get suspended has their hair cut like me. Mm -hmm. They dress up the same way I dress up. I, what people have to understand is not so much about how you look, it's who you are. And God told Prophet Samuel, that man looks at the outside, but I God don't look at the heart. Anymore. Yeah, you know, and it's not just a Ghanaian thing. You have to understand, Prophet Samuel, it was said that none of his words fell to the ground, mm. but he was mm. the same person that got to the house of Jesse and looked at Eliab and said, "Surely, this is the Lord's anointed." Jeez. Which comes to tell us that if a prophet at his stature and level can make a mistake based upon appearance, how much more us who may not even mm. have the office of a prophet? Wow. can make those mistakes as well. Wow. So what we have to do is we have to intently make room for the Holy Spirit to change us to be like Christ so that we don't see men according to ethnicity, color of hair, uh, woman or not. So no, we must be available to all for, the, uh, for all to become like Christ. Mm. When Jesus was saying on the well, the disciples were surprised. The Bible says they were surprised that Jesus was sitting with a woman speaking. Mm -hmm. Because in those days, not even just a woman, but just also a Samaritan, right? What good, you know, I even look at the, the Good Samaritan pr uh, parable. It's, yeah. it's called a Good Samaritan. Why? Because in the eyes of the Jews, what Samaritan can be good, right? Mm. So Christ now opens up this door for us to accept all according to the heart, 
not so much of how people look. So yeah. we have to be more Christ-centered in our churches because if we keep looking at people according to culture, then we leave Christ out of it. That's why mm. we say Christ over culture. Yeah. And what you have to understand is like everything in this world comes from God, right? Mm-hmm. The devil uses it's like sex came from God. Yeah. But then when it's not done in holiness, it becomes perverted. Exactly. Right? And that's what's happened with sex. So same thing with music. It's created by God. Mm-hmm. It was meant for his glory. Now, if I take a beat and then I rap it and I sing of him in true doctrine, mm. I'm glorifying God. We need to get away from this. It looks the appearance of rap. Yeah. You know, let's look at what's really being pushed. And that's why young people are leaving. What you went through, you're lucky you stayed. I talk about that in my book. One guy mm-hmm. rapped at a convention. My apostle was like, yo, cut it off. This is unholy music. Dude was hurt. Dude never came back to church. Jeez. You know, um, it's because they want us to become African, really not Christian. Yeah. Ooh. They want us to be African. Jeez. Really, really, oh. They want us to be, it's like you raise us here. Because for greener pastures, mm. so take advantage of the system, but continue to be African because our culture is better. Yeah. Right? So there's a fight in between young people. It's like I go to school, they tell me to be myself, and I'm being myself around the culture that I spend more time with. When I come home, say, don't do that, don't do that. But God needs da, 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 da. And then there's this fight in between where it's like church is really not always, not every church, but not all churches are really preaching the gospel. Mm-hmm. It's like they're preaching man philosophies. They're preaching what makes them comfortable, what really is culture. Mm. And then they just add some Bible into it to make it look like it's the gospel. Wow. That's the issue, man. Jeez. That's, a, that's, that's some heavy stuff to chew on. That's some heavy stuff to chew yeah. on. <laughs> uh, right now, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm actually in, um, like our, our church is putting us through like some, a few seminary classes, you know, for, for yeah. guys that they're trying to, um, I guess, become leaders in the future. Uh, where we have a, a multicultural ministry class, right? Okay. And and <laughs> so this multicultural class is it's a it's a very powerful class. Like I I love the class, right? I love okay. the class because I know who I am as a person. I'm that type of person. I yeah. I my goal is not to have a church that looks Ganyan. My church is to have a uh, my goal is to have a church that looks like heaven. That's that's my that's ultimate right. goal, right? Yeah. And you know the the church that we're in. I, I a lot of people say that that's something that they want, you know. But at the same time, it's not something that they want. Yeah, it's yeah. not something that yeah. they want because if if you are going to have people of all nations of all places, right? You're you're gonna have to kind of shift away from. Well, you'll feel like you have to shift away from who you truly are to to blend Correct. in with everybody else, and Correct. I. I I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. That's why I want to. I wanted to ask you. Like, yeah, do you yeah, yeah. do you do you think that having a multi or making our PIWCs or just just your let's just say it, it's a you know it's an African American church. Um, yeah. Now you're bringing in other people. Do you feel like you're gonna lose your culture and, and who you are bringing in other people? No, I don't. I don't think you you have to lose anything, right? I think we have to understand that. Whenever we come into Christ, Romans tells us that um, present your body as a living sacrifice, mm. holy and acceptable to God, which is, re- which is a reasonable act of worship. Yeah. So if we're presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice, it's kind of like an oxymoron, but how can you be living and how can you be sacrificed, right? Mm. So it's like you're dying to self, you're living for the spirit. And as we have been called to be the witnesses, even Jesus gave his disciples certain direction, first start in Judea, then Samaria, and to the other outer parts of this world. Mm. I also feel like Paul was a great example that when I go to Rome, I do what the Romans do. When I go here, so that all can be saved, right? Mm. So we must look at ourselves. If I'm in Ghana, right? Yeah. I do Christianity like the Europeans. This is the, <clears throat> I'm working on a documentary called Trail of Fire, mm-hmm. and I'm looking at for that. the reason. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm all, <laughs> it. but it's kind of like, the reason why the Methodist Church couldn't stand, or the Roman Catholic Church, or the or the Methodist Church, the Presby, all of them, they couldn't really stand to the charismatic wave or the Pentecostal wave 
than the neo charismatic wave. Mm. It was because they suffocated the culture of the people Jeez. and said you had to do things like Europeans. Mm. So they had the canticles, they had the hymns, they had all these things. And they said, oh, these spiritual things you guys are talking about, mommy water and stuff, it's not real. Da, 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 da. And they're like, nah, bro, we, we're <laughs> going through this. We see these yeah. sacrifices, bro. But they wanted them to be European. So back then, to be a Christian meant to be European. Mm. Like having mm. dinner at the table and all of that. So when the Pentecostals came, they came worshiping God in their own culture. So mm. Peter and Neem, James McClone came. The yep. big, James McClone is the founder of the biggest Pentecostal church in Ghana, which is the Church of Pentecost, which me and you go to. Mm-hmm. But he was a white man. He yep. came to Ghana. And he made sure that the people worshiped God according to what they understood. So they could dance yeah. the same way, they could use instruments, they could use songs that glorify God. So the reason why the Pentecostal and charismatic denominations flew is because they allowed the people to be themselves to worship God. Mm. I don't know if you can still see me. Should I turn my light? I work. No, no, I can see you. I can see you. Is it cool? Yeah. yeah. That's right. what I can turn the light on. Uh, actually, yeah, it's kind of getting dark now. Yeah, let me. Uh, it's just my job. Okay. Okay. I got to get up to turn it on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I said, um, James McCone came in here. James McCone allowed everybody in Ghana to worship God as a Ghanaian would feel. So everybody felt like, wow, we mm. finally have something that can actually combat the evil spirits. Also, save the man's soul, heal the oppressed body, and all of this in Christ. So the reason why Pentecost flew was because they can now worship the Christian God, right? I'm just saying mm. because the Orthodox can worship the Christian God in their own dialect yeah. and in their own way. So evangelism became like this, right? And then yeah. everybody was leaving the Orthodox coming here. So now if we're in America, right? And we want to now win America for Christ, then we must do things as Americans do it. Mm. First, like Paul said, we sacrifice who we are so that we win others to Christ. Yeah. So the reason why we see in our church is that so many churches have become Ghanaian and Nigerian, and et cetera, et cetera, is because we feel comfortable worshiping God the way we do. We, yep. And we be used in numbers to say that we've done a good job. So for instance, mm. if I have a lot of people coming, then it means that I fulfilled what God has called me to do. But numbers is not the right way to measure success in the spirit. Obedience is what, um, and, and obedience has its own reward. It can be here on earth and it could be up there in heaven. Yeah. Right. So I think the issue is that a lot of people don't want to let go of themselves. Mm. They want to live God the way they are. And because a lot of people are seeing success in numbers and finances, they feel like, it's working, so why not? Why don't we continue? So yeah. a lot of people would wish that the church could be multicultural, but it's just a wish. It's mm. not something that they're working towards because you can't say I want a white person, Spanish person to come to my church, and then you start you don't start church on time. You don't consider on people's timing. Uh, you don't have a spirit of excellence. You don't have a spirit that um, that encompasses the American culture. Um, you, you, you're not intentional. Look, you can't just put a sign and say, yeah, I will say we're international. I think just because they see international. National, yeah. You know, lock <laughs> into that. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's intentional relationships. Mm. How are you in your community? Who do you talk to? Who are your friends? Something that, it's not even just our parents' generation that's facing this. I'm facing this in true worshipers mm. that I'm seeing numbers, but am I really seeing the Great Commission in America. Why am I here? If my mm. parents were John the Baptist and they ministered, John the Baptist just ministered to the Israelites and said, repent for the kingdom of God is coming. But Jesus was here for the whole world. Mm. Then what am I doing? Am I fulfilling my part? So I have to be intentional. Instead of inviting Joe Meadow one time, I may have to invite Beto. Yeah. Maybe I don't listen to Beto, but mm. I have to put myself aside, sacrifice what I want for what God wants so that his kingdom can expand. So I think people wish, including myself, I wish for multicultural ministry. But the question is, what sacrifices am I making to ensure that I become like an American so I can win an American 
mm-hmm. and win them for Christ. So wow. that's it. That's powerful. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 one, the one thing I definitely picked up from that is, is sacrifice, right? I, th- I think that's everything. Sacrifice that's is everything because many of us are so comfortable being who we are. <laughs> that we bro, don't, I love, we my, don't... Mer- I love my Merc crew, bro. I be yeah, thinking about trust, that. Yeah. Dang, bro. If I go to a white church, bro, I got like, no elder Merc no more. Uh, <laughs> no. Trust me. Trust me. Yeah. Like, it, it's crazy because like, even when I went to college, so it, it's, it, my story is interesting. Even when I went to college, I actually left the church. I left for two years. Yeah. I left. And mm-hmm. then when I came back, I still didn't go back. I didn't go back to my church. I went to a church called um, mm. uh, Harvest Bible Chapel by James McDonald. I think he, I think he's in yeah. But they had a they had a church here. And that's where I went. Oh, and that's, James you know, McDonald from America, Chicago. Yeah, in, in oh, Chicago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he had a he had a church. Mm. He had he had some churches here. Yeah, I, I heard there's uh, something. I heard there's some there's yeah. some. Yeah. <laughs> I heard there's, yeah. they they actually even changed their name. They're called Hope Fellowship now. So. Okay. Yeah, they're yeah. not they're not harvest anymore. But um, yeah. So I, I was even last time I was even I was, I was I was I was I was making fun of my friends. I'm like, yo, your chairman, your chairman is doing some weird stuff, bro. At least my chairman is he's consistent. You know. <laughs> so, <it's right. laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. so I was I was making jokes with them. But yeah. I actually went to that church for like three years. Um, it's not necessarily because I liked them. Like I hated the music, to be honest. No, no disrespect to anyone watching this. I because that's not yeah. my culture, right? I, I didn't that's come. Great. I didn't come from that. I, I came up from very upbeat, you know, very emotional music. That's that's how we that's how we worship. But um, over there is completely different. The feel was different. Um, even the fellowship was different. Like for us, I can, you know, if I, you know, I'm a deacon here. Right? I can go to anybody's house, any any member's house, and just relax and just chill. You know, we're all, it's like we're all family. But if you do that in a in, in a different culture, it's not the same. Like the way we do it in our in our culture. That's right. So yeah, so. Like a lot of a lot of a lot of things were were very different, but as I said, talking about sacrifice, um, James McKeon, when he came to Ghana, I think there was a statement. Someone told me they said that he said that I didn't come to plant a European oak or or a European tree. I came to plant an African tree, That's something right. like that. So the 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 method that he used to have that explosion is the same method that we have to use. Here, because it's not the message that's changing; it's the method. We we have it's to use method, different methods, bro. right? Man, so and they don't get that. Yeah, exactly. So, like, if we come here, we have to, like Paul says, you know, with, with the with the Jews, I, I behave as the Jews; with the Greeks, I behave as the, the, the Greeks. It's not that you're you're losing yourself in in your holiness or your your salvation, but you're just become you're you're understanding the culture. You're becoming a culturalist, I guess. You're you're, you're shaping your you're shaping yourself to to fit in. So that you can reach those people that are there. So sacrifice is 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 everything. Sacrifice is major. And um, as believers, I think we need to truly um, understand that word and live yeah, I mean, live, live that out. Almost, he knew, James McKeown knew he was sacrificing his life. Mm. Like they knew that Africa was the white man's burial ground. Like yeah. he died of malaria and it's a wrap. So he knew that if I'm going here. If I can sacrifice my life, how much more my taste, mm. things I like, you know, mm. it's like, it's a true call to sacrifice. Missions is a true call to sacrifice. The gospel is a true self call to sacrifice because self shouldn't be involved at all. He should be led by the spirit. Exactly. Make sure God has his way. Yeah. Exactly. So, so what, what, what made you kind of um, decide to start True Worshippers? Yeah. So I realized that there was this, for True Worshippers, I realized there was this gap or this, something missing when it came to young people. I feel like church was always um, created and fashioned for the older mm. generation. I mean, they're paying the tights, they have the money. So every program you go to, like extra oil conference, anointing service, yeah. you know, yeah. give us like a youth conference, a youth program once a year. That's what we used to get. And I felt like, nah, let me tailor a program that would, engage my generation and be able to come together and have a good time in God's presence. And so that's how I started. I was there and I was just like, man, gather young people, praise and worship. And then I also had a distaste for programs. When you go for a praise and worship program, it'll be like 10 different artists or 10 yeah. 
quiet and then the main artist goes on and by the time the main artist goes on everybody's out right it's exhausted, so i yeah. said why not why not just have like two people give them like an hour bro or like two 30 minutes yeah and just worship and and i we call true worshipers like on steroids praise and worship on steroids so <laughs> we um we, we the first time first year we brought sony badu and uh elder up here and Sonny Badu did the worship, but I did the praises. Was that and in um, Washington? That was in Virginia, yeah. Yeah. Virginia area. And Virginia, okay. It was amazing. It was a great time. And then we said, okay, let's get like four artists. So the next thing we did like Mozoke, New York High, mm. LAPIA, and Pastor Bez. And we just gave them time to worship the Lord, man. It was just worship. And we just kept it going. But to answer your question, the reason we started is because we felt that young people didn't have a place to express themselves in the Lord. Mm. And we wanted church was to become that hub for many Amer- uh, Ghanaian Americans and Nigerian Americans and to come down for a weekend to just experience God. But over wow. the years, it's, it's grown. It's grown from an event planning ministry to a spirit-led ministry whereby mm. we now have prayer, leadership conferences, relationship conferences, um, which is being led by the Spirit each and every year so that young people can be equipped. And we've noticed for the 11 years, it's really for young people, like some of the old people that have kids and marry now, yeah. just chilling. And then now the generation is just taking Jeez. over. So wow. I got some hope the next three years, man, I hand it over to another young person to keep wow. it going. That's wow. the only way we can keep, keep it moving. So again, to answer your question, we started because something was missing and I felt that true worshipers could be that filler to wow, keep that's young powerful. people in. That's powerful. Yeah, yeah. And and to be honest, anyone who's watching this, like true worshipers is crazy. <laughs> like yeah, you know, true, yeah. true worshipers is wild. Let me tell you something. Honestly, I'll tell I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you my testimony after I get offline. But yo, yo true wor- like true worshipers, let me tell you something. True worshipers, one that Daniel Bassi came, I changed my life, bro. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Changed, changed my life, life too. <laughs> changed, changed, changed yeah. everything, bro. Like even on a spiritual level, changed everything, bro. Yeah. Change <laughs> like wow. uh, uh, I'll, t- I'll tell you after I'll tell you after <laughs> I'll tell you after like it, it was actually crazy but so with you know you have uh, Yao Se Wusu Ministries you have True Worshippers um, Incorporation um, you're an author now what what is the what is the main mission what like what's the main goal Most with have. everything main, that you're trying to do bro I love, I love that question the main goal is Christ to be glorified in my life mm. Uh, and I can tell you, he, he's glorified with the books I write, be glorified with the music I sing, be glorified with the movies I produce, mm. glorified with everything we do with true worshipers. Um, wow. it was, the Bible says, whether you're drinking or you're eating, make sure you're doing it to the glory, the glory of God. Of God. Mm. Um, I want, and then also, let's say, a subsidiary aspect of the glory of God. I want young people to be able to also say that I can also start with little. And the Lord, if we're faithful with it, the Lord can multiply. Mm. I want young people to have the confidence that you don't need money. You just need God. Jeez. You need the Holy Spirit. I want young people to say that it doesn't matter where I come from. I can also be used by the Lord. So Most definitely, as we're giving God glory, I want people to be inspired that God can use anybody to, 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 um, to do his work as well. So that's really what it is. Like, it's not even a moment. I just do what I want to do. Bro. Like, you mm. know? The idea of like, bro, you can't t- put me in a box. You can't tell me like, oh, I mean, I've heard people like, hey, so you're an author. And I'm like, bro, I don't see myself yeah. what I do. Yeah. Bro. It's easy. Like people like, how do you invite William and Tom? How do you invite? Like, it's easy, bro. Just go on a website. Ask <laughs> them, Can you come? Yeah. What is the, you know, and then we go through the process, you know? Yeah. Any and everything is possible, man. I'm trying to tell you. But people sometimes need an example. Yeah, but I, I don't want to be the example per se. I just want to be like this idea of okay, it can be done. And let's go. I can do better mm-hmm. than you. I want people to do better than me, right? Wow. But I just feel like like I, I know I know you say you don't want to be the example, but man, to be honest, you are, bro. You like you yo you are not nah, because yo yo I'm telling you, bro. You're you're one of the most inspirational people I've ever met in my life. To be honest, man, to be honest. Really, before really yo before I'm not gonna lie, I I used to be jealous of you, bro. <laughs> like I, I, like I used to be jealous. Like I used to see you. I'm like, yo. Like, sometimes I want to put out something. And be yeah. like, yo, it's not up to par with y'all. You know what? Let me let me oh, try to. <laughs> I'm dead serious. I'm dead serious, bro. And I think, I think the story, the story of it all. It's like, bro. If I tell you that, 
this is the first year I've actually had, let's say, five thousand dollars in my name, bro. Like for more than six months, mm. you know. I've been through a lot, bro. Like my money, I never had a savings. I was always pumping into true issues. Jeez. And God has blessed me this year greatly. Mm. And I'm kind of like, you know, I don't look down. I don't look, look, I look up to Christ. I look at others as, you know, a nice inspiration here and there. But we just never know what people go through, bro. Facebook 100%. and Instagram and these things can look a certain way, but Charlie. We should always pray that we fulfill the will of God for our lives. Our because lives, yeah. Giving us the grace to go through what we went through. What you probably went through, I may not be able to handle. What I'm mm. going through, may not be able to handle. But God doesn't give us anything we can, right? So most definitely. Well, let me not say that. That's my scripture, right? But like, let's let's say He doesn't really tempt us, right? He doesn't yeah. put us in a position to mess us up. He only gives puts us in a position on that we can try, him, right? So, um, I I think, man, it's. I just want people to say that, man, it's, it's possible. Mm-hmm. When you have zero and you add God, it's everything, man. It's possible. And I, I, yeah. and as I always say, if you want to follow me, I follow me as I follow Christ. Christ. Mm-hmm. But you have to know scripture to know what Christ will be, right? So get into your word, man. And when you see me acting up, call me out. Yeah, I don't mind. No, mm-hmm. I, I need that. So, yeah. Wow. Oh, that's powerful. That's powerful. Mm-hmm. Bro, I appreciate your time, man. Thank you so oh, much for thank you so man. much for 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 coming on. Uh, you know, yeah. I'll say if you guys want to if you guys want to support him, um, I think you have uh, PayPal, Cash App. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, but I mean, you can get the book um, on Amazon, mm. African Elephant. Yeah, get the book on there. Um, I'll put the link below somewhere on on YouTube. Awesome, yeah. awesome. But yeah, just support. You know, um, and you know, I, I'm, this is just the beginning. So mm. um, we just pray that the Lord keeps us both. What you're doing well, definitely. makes you this to be a simple podcast, bro. But I pray the next five years you will own the own podcast company. In Jesus' name. Amen. Mm-hmm. So Amen. Shall God bless you and you guys watching as well. Amen. You. Is there any last words that you would have for the young, the youth and young adults, anyone watching? Yeah. Um, I will say this. Um, get to know the Holy Spirit for yourself. Mm. Have a consistent relationship. Wake up in the morning. And, be, and 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 tell yourself that you're going to read scripture. You're going to um, pray. That's the only thing that's going to keep you, man. Life only gets harder when you get older, mm-hmm. right? So the only thing that can keep you is his word. A lot of people disappoint you, but what will keep you is his word and, and, and prayer. So I'm telling you, man, it's good to look up to people, but don't do it too much, man. Mm-hmm. Christ, I think, is a great example. Powerful. And then he has his own will and way for you. You walk in that, to be able to accomplish whatever he has to do. So. Most yeah, definitely. Man. All right, man. Once again, I appreciate you, brother. Thank you for coming on. God bless you. Uh, you guys support um, by buying the book, African Elephant, because it will change your perspective. It will change your mind on a lot of things. Uh, um, and, and you know, y'all, God bless you once more, God bro. You I appreciate too, you, man. God bless you. Thank you.